Um, just a note to President Trump, it's really not helpful when you relate Kavanaugh's allegations to yourself and those that were made <laughs> against you, right? I've had many false allegations. Like, there's no reason to tie the two of you together in that way. Um, but I want to start with this, this letter that they pulled from Kavanaugh's youth uh, where he, he admits that his group that's going into this house uh, are loud, obnoxious drunks with prolific pukers among us. Can I just say, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. If you read this whole letter, you will be so impressed at this, the responsibility of this young man saying to his roommates, this is when the lease needs to be paid, this, it has to be paid in cash, do it up front, have to be respectful, have to do this, these are the rules of the house. And then he puts a postscript on there, a PS saying, hey, by the way, it's a joke. It's a joke. This does not help anyone's case. And the New York Times, they should not be focused on that, okay? That's my take on the letter. I'll say one thing about that. And, and, and it's something a lot of people are scratching their heads about. When he was asked about drinking in the hearing, not, why not just say, you know what? I drank too many beers. He did. Because. He did. No. He did. He did. He did. No. over and by very free, yeah, frequently in college, as everybody did. And if that is but a disqualification for a confirmable post, no, 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 no and I'm not one saying that it, and, 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 and I'm not saying that it is. No, I, that's un, an unfair characterization. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that there, he, he was hesitant in it, and there was actually no reason to be, because almost everybody <laughs> has got some story from that this period of life that they regret. It's not relevant that he drank. It's relevant because if he admitted that he blacked out drinking in a high school or college, then there's the possibility that he does not remember the, what happened in the incident with Dr. Ford. And he must maintain that he did not black out because otherwise his categorical, categorical denial will that be meaningless. That letter does not disprove that. That is a silly reference by a, a it was teenager. silly of him to take the tack he took and not just come out with it and say, I absolutely drank too much. He, he did tried say to... that. No, he didn't. No, he, look, he was look very... my, he here's my own. Too many beers. He said, I, I drank too many beers. Here's my impression. In his interview. But I never blacked out. In his interview. And you can't prove that he did. That's the thing. You can't sure. prove that. But in his interview with Martha McCallum on Fox News, he was much more choir boyish. And I think mm -hmm. that really hurt him because I think that's still the impression in people's head, that which is his testimonial about himself was too squeaky clean. By the time he got before the Senate, he had changed the story more to, all right, I, I, I like beer. I still like beer. And I drank too much beer at many times. Um, I, I really feel like this is going to tick off the American people, G going after him nit by nit as to the number of beers he drank, the number of kegs they had when he was in college. Let's just, let's, if he perjured himself, that's one thing. But he did admit to the drinking. We need to find out whether he sexually assaulted anybody. And today, the news on that um, is, is looking at the Ford polygraph. That's another, an ex-boyfriend of Dr. Ford has now submitted a letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee reportedly. Fox News is reporting this. They, they say they've obtained it. In which he says that, that Dr. Ford told him she had prepared her friend for a polygraph test. That she, quote, explained in detail to that friend what to expect, how polygraphs worked, and that she helped that friend become familiar and less nervous about the exam. Why is that relevant? Because Rachel Mitchell asked Dr. Ford, have you ever had discussions with anyone on how to take a polygraph? Answer, never. I don't make... I don't mean countermeasures, the prosecutor said. I'm talking about any sorts of tips, anything like that. Answer, no. Question, did you ever give advice to someone who was looking to take a polygraph? Answer, no. And so the question is, if you're going to go back and parse every single line of the testimonials, do we have to do it to both of them? We absolutely do. And this is another reason why there should be a full FBI investigation and the problem with the fact that there isn't. That person should be spoken to and should be understand whether the context was in her capacity as a psychologist who understands how memory works. Is that what she, she was talking about? She didn't contextualize her answer. No, that was her answer. Well, no, she, I, never. Or, or, or ask her, do you remember this conversation of 20 years ago with a friend? She may not. And the point is that just because, and I think this is where Trump and other get it wrong because you may not remember where exactly it was or some of the tangential events doesn't mean it doesn't mean happen. you don't remember the traumatic experience that's true and th what's what is troubling to me about this FBI investigation is it's being handcuffed and it is not a fulsome investigation they are not they, speaking they never to suggested it was going to be and as for not speaking to Kavanaugh and Ford Jeff Flake we only care about Flake Murkowski and Collins at this point basically because those are the three swing boats Jeff Flake was on today this morning saying, I don't care about that. The, the, the Senate already had a crack at Ford. They already had a crack at Kavanaugh. 
that was never contemplated. And but I'm they didn't and I'm really fine. have a crack at Kavanaugh. But, but what you think and what I think doesn't matter. The only people who matter are Flake, Collins, and Murkowski. And, and by, the way, the by the way, last night, Trump didn't do himself any favors with Murkowski and Collins. What a shock. <laughs> you know, so you why have to why does he feel the strategy. need to put, pour kerosene on everything? You should have seen the faces of the audience while we were playing that soundbite of him. Just stop pouring kerosene on, on the fire, right? He can't help himself, Noah. Yeah, to link himself to his accusations, which are far more credible. I mean, everybody forgets that he actually apologized for what happened in the Access Hollywood tape before he started mischaracterizing it as maybe it didn't even actually happen. But he took, he took responsibility for and those there are so some... say, this is just like me, really is, is condemnation. I think that it's definitely over 12, but I think the total number is 16 women who have come forward against Donald Trump with accusations. Really, we only have one woman alleging assault against Donald, against uh, Brett Kavanaugh, one woman who claims he may or may not have exposed himself to her. She didn't see it with her own two eyes. And then there's the third woman, Julie Swetnick, who I don't even have time to get into her, her hot mess of a testimonial. But I, I'm no longer even including her in the accusers. I mean, honestly... It, she, her allegations have gone so far off the rails and her credibility issues are so severe. And it's I think we should stop talking and about her. This is why it's problematic, is that when you watch her interview and you watch Dr. Ford's testimony, you see a fundamentally different thing. One really appeared very credible, and Julie Swetnick really did not appear credible walking away from At her all. declaration. At all. And that undermines it all totally. for Dr. I've Ford. I've been saying since the beginning, I have refused to report Julie Swetnick's allegations on this show. Uh, which Avenatti teased for a week before he dropped them on us. Um, you know, you don't tease alleged gang rape, right? Uh, so I haven't been talking about Julie Swetnick, and then when we finally got to hear her and hear about her background, it was very clear this woman has severe credibility problems. Let's just stop talking about her. Let's focus on Ford, who had, who showed up, who was credible. You can, you can find holes in her story, but she deserves our ear. But we Go do ahead. need to see a lot more media interest in Dr. Ford. I think she's very credible. I think her story was affecting and moving. But she has entered into testimony her therapy notes, her medical records, which she has withheld from the Judiciary yeah. Committee. You, you can't, can't cite him... that as evidence and then say, I'm keeping it back. And you can't give them to the Washington Post. She said she gave her therapist notes to the Washington Post, but won't give them to the Senate. Right, because so the it's... Washington so it's Post will the... actually guard them, so and the Senate press. will leak them. Well, I mean, listen, she, it's, you, then you can't use them. And you can't use them.